As a child, Beatrix Potter loved to draw, especially animals and plants. She and her brother, Bertram, used to spend hours drawing their pets. Beatrix's favorite models were her pet rabbits, but the duo also loved to draw their other pets, mice, frogs, lizards, snakes, and a bat. <laughs> Beatrix's first book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit, was published in 1902, and she went on to publish 30 books in all. She was a brilliant businesswoman, and in 1903, she created a Peter Rabbit doll, making Peter the first ever licensed storybook character. Over two million Beatrix Potter books are sold every year. That's four books every minute of every day. Pretty impressive for characters that are over 100 years old. Earlier this year, Miss Muller read us Beatrix Potter's book, The Tale of Jeremy Fisher. Today, Mr. Schultz reads us the tale of Johnny Town Mouse. This is the tale of Johnny Town Mouse by Beatrix Potter. Johnny Town Mouse was born in a cupboard. Timmy Willie was born in a garden. Timmy Willie was a little country mouse who went to town by mistake in a basket. The gardener sent vegetables to town once a week and he packed them in a big basket. One day the gardener left the hamper by the garden gate so that it could be picked up. Timmy Willie crept through a hole in the basket and after eating some peas, he soon fell fast asleep. He woke up in a fright because the basket was being lifted onto a horse-drawn carriage. And then he felt a jolting and a clattering of the horse hoof. There were other packages that were thrown about, and for miles and miles he bumped. And Timmy Willie was afraid. At last, the horse-drawn cart stopped at a house, and the basket was taken into a house and set down. But there was no quiet, because there seemed to be hundreds of horse-drawn carts passing by. Dogs barked, boys whistled as they walked down the street. There was a cook who laughed, and a maid ran up and down the stairs. Timmy Willie, who had lived all of his life in a garden, was frightened to death by all the noises. Soon, the cook opened the basket and began to unpack the vegetables, and out jumped a terrified mouse. The cook screamed, a mouse, a mouse, call the cat, fetch me a stick. Now, Timmy Willie did not wait for the stick to be fetched. Instead, he ran along the wall until he came to a little hole in the wall, and in he popped. Soon, he found that he had crashed into the middle of a house mouse dinner party. He broke three glasses as he tumbled in. Johnny Town Mouse said, who in the world is this? But then he remembered his good manners. And with the utmost politeness, he introduced Timmy Willie to all the other house mice. Timmy Willie had a small tail compared to the long coat tails worn by the house mouse. The house mouse and his friend were too kind to point this out. The dinner had eight courses and it was truly elegant. Timmy Willie did not know of any of the foods that were served. He was a little afraid to taste them, but he was so very hungry and so anxious to behave with the house mouse manners. Soon, the young mice came in with dessert. The two young mice were waiters. They kept running into the house kitchen and squeaked and laughed and came back with crumbs that had been spilled. After dinner, they asked, would you feel comfortable going to bed I will show you the most comfortable spot in the house it is the sofa the sofa had a little hole in the pillow the town mouse honestly said it was the best bed and they used it exclusively for visitors but it smelled of a cat so Timmy Willie preferred to sleep in the hole in the wall it was the same the next day there was an excellent breakfast which was provided 
by the crumbs that had spilled. The house mouse were used to eating bacon, but poor Timmy Willie had been raised on roots and salad and garden vegetables. He was also particularly frightened by the loud crashing and noises of the people who were in the house. Timmy Willie soon wanted to be back home in his peaceful nest on the sunny riverbank. He did not enjoy the house mouse food, and all the noises prevented him from getting a good night's sleep. Johnny Town Mouse noticed that Timmy Willie was uncomfortable, and he asked him if he would rather go back home to his garden. Yes, he said, because when it rains, I can sit in my sandy burrow and I can eat vegetables. I can peep out of the hole and look at the flowers and the birds. And there are no noises there except for the birds and the bees and the lambs in the meadow. Johnny Town Mouse confessed, I'm a little disappointed that we cannot entertain you, but perhaps it would be wiser for you to return in the basket to the garden. Really? cried Timmy Willie. Why, of course, said Johnny. Did you not know that the empty basket goes back to the farmer on Saturdays? So Timmy Willie said goodbye to his new friends, and he hid in the basket. And soon, after much jostling in the horse-drawn carriage, he was back home safely in his own garden. Sometimes he went to look at the basket that was sitting by the garden gate, but he knew better than to ever climb in again. And he never got out and back to the city, and he waited for Johnny Town Mouse to come and pay him a visit. The winter passed. The sun came out again. Timmy Willie sat by his burrow, warming his little fur coat and sniffing the smell of violets and spring grass. He had nearly forgotten his visit to town when, when up the sandy path, all spick and span with a brown leather bag, came Johnny Town Mouse. Timmy Willie received him with open arms. You have come at the best of all year. We will have herb pudding and sit in the sun. Mm-mm, mm it is a little damp, said Johnny Town Mouse, who was carrying his tail under his arm out of the mud. What is that fearful noise, he started violently. That, said Timmy Willie, that is only a cow. I will beg a little milk. They are quite, they are quite harmless, unless they happen to lie down upon you. How are all our friends? Johnny's account was rather m middling. He explained why he was paying his visit so early in the season. The family had gone to the seaside for Easter. The cook was doing spring cleaning on board wages with particular instructions to clear out the mice. Whatever is that fearful racket, that is only the lawnmower. I will fetch some of the grass clippings presently to make your bed. I am sure you had better settle in the country, Johnny. Mm-mm-mm. We shall see by Tuesday week. The hamper is stopped where they are at the seaside. I am sure you will never want to live in the town again, said Timmy Willie. But he did. He went back in the very next hamper of vegetables. He said it was too quiet. One place suits one person. Another place suits another person. For my part, I prefer to live in the country like Timmy Willie. The end.